This guy's wearing no gloves. Horse head nebula? I wonder what the aliens were thinking when they saw that up there. Hey, I'm Sam White. Hi, I'm Megan Sapak. Hey, I'm Joe. My name's Sam Yellen. My name's Effie. My name's Jenya. My name's Brady Sauls. Ryan, co-founder and CTO of Astronus, and we're going to review some legendary space missions. Okay, starting up, we have the literal first one. Sputnik, Earth's first artificial satellite. Cool fact that the moon is actually a satellite. Satellite's anything that orbits the Earth. Is that the fuel tank or something? That's the whole thing. It's so small. It's kind of a similar size to Arcturus. I didn't realize that Sputnik was that small. This guy's wearing no gloves. Oh yeah, clean rooms were clearly not a thing back then, huh? All Sputnik did is basically beep. It was a it was a weather recorder, so it, it looked down and it had something that when it saw clouds, it uh it beeped, and when it didn't see clouds, it didn't beep. I feel like the design of this influenced a lot of cultures like interpretation of what a satellite was going to look like for a really long time. I've actually never seen what it looked like to launch Sputnik. I've seen Sputnik many times and the models of it. I've never seen what this insane thing they're putting up now is. I always thought it was really cool how the Soviets rolled out their rockets on trains. I just really liked trains as a kid. The Russian rockets kind of have these like very distinct shape where they've got this huge array of engines on the bottom that come up into kind of a point. So let's make it into orbit. Totally take it for granted as how things work here at Astronus, and it was all brand, brand new at the time. Pretty cool how far we've come. It's simple compared to like today's satellites, but it's useful because it was just kind of like groundbreaking technology. It was also just like the competition of like, we gotta be first. Best way that you get humans to do things is you uh, create competition. That's how we got a lot of great initial space stuff done. Oh. It was a huge jump forward in terms of humankind in space, but I'm more of a fan of the Apollo missions myself. Oh, the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble is, telescope is so awesome. These space telescopes are really kind of an example of the pinnacle of our modern engineering, I think, because they're so precision oriented, but they're also going through a launch, which is itself very high energy event, but these mirrors have to stay perfect and and uh, to, to achieve their mission. Hubble was huge when I was a kid, and it was really like seeing the first images from space, seeing the Crab Nebula, the Sombrero Nebula, that was a huge deal. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like, look at all the texture in those photos. What's this one? Horse head nebula? I feel like I'm just naming things I've seen in like science museums at this point. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy because even now you could look at like the James Webb telescope versus Hubble. When the Hubble photos came out, everybody was like, oh my God, this is revolutionary. And now we're seeing the James Webb photos and those are even crazier. Hubble really brought space to the everyday kind of person. You could have it like as your screensaver or in your house, right? Other than making really great desktop pictures, uh, they've taught so many people so much about the universe. Uh, Hubble is how we we figured out that the universe is still expanding. We've actually sent people up to repair Hubble in the space uh, space shuttle. I think it's the only satellite that's ever been repaired by humans. It is really cool that uh, they were able to send astronauts to go work on it. And you ended up with all these really cool images of how it works and it working in space. Amazing that it's still working. I think it's a testament to our ability to go up and, and fix it and work on it. And just probably one of the best things we've ever built. Falcon Heavy first launch. I remember watching this live from my lab in grad school. I remember like seeing in a conference room at my last job, we all watched this launch together. And you can't just like be at work ignoring that this has happened, like you, happening, you're gonna stop and watch it. So I used to work at SpaceX and we announced in 2011 that we were gonna be building Falcon Heavy. Something big is coming, super, super exciting. And this is how we're gonna get to space with our first satellite, Arcturus. I cannot believe that our small satellite is going to launch on Falcon Heavy. It's like extra cool because we're launching the first satellite on a Falcon Heavy. It's going to be crazy. Seeing every single one of these rockets goes up as well as it does it just further blows my mind that they're doing what they're doing, which means we can do what we're doing. We're all in this together. Those boosters separate soon. Here we go. And in this one, they, they fly all three boosters back, which was, that was the first time they had done that. Prior to Astronus, I worked on rocket engines. The redundancy and the control loop tightness on, on, on how fast you have to control some of the valves and respond to anomalies in order to avoid issues uh, is really crazy. There's so much complexity in making a system that, that will all come together to work like this. Even all the individual parts are com complicated, but when you bring it all together, there's an amazing amount of complexity. The little dummy in there just driving the car through space. I wonder what the aliens were thinking when they saw that up there. I mean, the idea that a company would actually not take itself so seriously and be able to just launch a car into space, uh, I think it's such a great way to get people engaged. 
still blows my mind that people have actually walked on the moon. I watched something saying it would be way harder to fake this with the video equipment we had in the day than it would be to, to show it all. That's the surface of the moon. I think that the moon landing happened. <laughs> Some friends though, I don't know. Okay, so we're coming, we're landing down on the moon. Classic one. I'd be like so worried coming down this ladder that or like trip or something. Like everyone would remember you tripping off the ladder. It's like such a nice little home. This is a pretty cool shot. I have to wonder how they must have stuck a camera out of a boom or like how did they threw it out of the window first or something like that. In the Apollo missions, they had a really well-known famous failure is kind of an interesting word. The, the system actually behaved as they would have expected it to, but there was an anomalous behavior in their flight computer. The underlying issue that they experienced um, on approach for the, the you know the first manned mission to the moon was fundamentally an issue with just resources available on the computer. We have a lot more flexibility now on changing our software. When these missions were created, the flight computers were woven together. The programs were actually programmed by uh, like seamstresses who would stitch together uh, metal metal wires through loops and away from loops. The amount that we have to go and figure out on our laptops, it's crazy that they were able to do the landing on smaller computer. You know, it was, it was the 60s or I guess the 70s at this point. I wonder what the ground feels like. Is it just like dirt or is it like feel different than what it feels like on Earth? I kind of like the, uh, it has certain home movie qualities. <laughs> I feel like the coolest thing about going back to the moon is like think about how much better their cameras are going to be now. <laughs> moon bloopers. <laughs> I didn't even know moon bloopers was a thing. So we're astronaut. We're bouncing around the moon and we are trying really hard to pick something up. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody's just filming him and not helping. Like they're just watching him struggle. I just like feel like getting up has to be like the most challenging thing. She like reminds me when you have like a really heavy backpack on and you like bend down to get something. It's a lot of hard work to get to space. And it's not magically easier when you're there. Actually, one of the biggest challenges that the astronauts recorded was the dust on the moon. They could deal with most other things, but the dust was so fine and so gritty, it would like mess up their spacesuits. You can't get them. <laughs> Those are hard jobs at the end of the day. We're doing a performance 24 seven. This guy is putting one on. I really hope that we can kind of reestablish that way of like getting onto the moon one day. It's something that a lot of us will be watching really closely here.